Alrighty class, we are going to go over two different case studies that uh, involve therapeutic communication. So here goes case study number one. It is a very busy day at inner city healthcare. Despite the three emergencies in the early afternoon and the full schedule of patients, everything is running smoothly with Dr. Lewis and the entire staff responding quickly but thoroughly to patient concerns. At 4 p.m., another emergency patient arrives at the same time. Jim Marshall comes in early for a routine appointment and demands to be seen immediately. Jim, a regular patient, has a history of being difficult and impatient. Being a bit arrogant, he tends to put his needs first. However, Dr. Lewis is occupied with another patient. It is critical to treat the patient with the emergency as soon as possible, and Jim is half an hour early. Ellen Armstrong, M.A., calmly asks Mr. Marshall to please wait until his scheduled appointment time. When he threatens to leave, Ellen explains to Mr. Marshall that there are two patients ahead of him, but that the provider will see him at his scheduled appointment time. All right, so let's think about that case. And what communication roadblocks did the M.A. avoid as she reacted to Jim Marshall's demands to see the provider? What do you guys think? So she avoided the roadblock of defending. She never gave him an excuse. She simply said there was two patients ahead of him and that he would be seen at his appointment time. There's no need to defend or contradict yourself. Um, again, remember that you need to avoid any of those um, roadblocks to therapeutic communication. Just simply state the facts. All right, number two. With another student, role play the scenario, with one student taking the role of the patient and one student the role of the MA. Obviously, we can't do that through a video, but I want you guys to identify the roadblocks to communication imposed by the patient. So how is the MA using the five C's of communication to deal with the situation? Take some time to think about it. So what are the five C's of communication? Can you remember them? Remember they're clear, concise, complete, coherent, and courteous. So what do you think? How is the MA using these five C's to deal with the situation? Was she clear in her interactions? Was she courteous? I believe so. I think she gave Jim all the information that he needed. She stated the facts. They were concise. She completed the thought. She told him when he would be seen, and she kept a courteous tone. So I believe the MA did a great job of using the five C's of communication to deal with the situation. All right, number three. Do you think the medical assistant reacted appropriately? What else could she have done? What should she not do in this situation? Take a minute to think about those questions. All right, do you think she reacted appropriately? I think she did. There are some other things she could have done. So let's think about that. She could have offered to reschedule his appointment. Perhaps he is just not gonna wait for his scheduled appointment. She could certainly offer to reschedule it for a different time. She could ask him how she could make him more comfortable while he waited. I think that's a really courteous thing to do. Perhaps give him a magazine or you could even change the TV channel um, if there's a TV in your office. Um, if you have an office manager, you can always ask if he'd like to speak with someone like the office manager. Sometimes that diffuses the situation um, or allows you to hand it off to someone that may more appropriately be able to handle the situation. She should never get angry or be sarcastic or ignore him. So those are some definite things to um, not do in this situation. All right, let's look at case study number two. We have an 82 year old woman with moderate dementia and a hearing impairment. They're brought, she's brought to the surger, surgeon's clinic for a follow-up appointment after a hip replacement surgery. The woman's daughter, who is the patient's medical power of attorney, accompanies her. 
The goal of the appointment is to make certain that the hip is healing nicely and to discuss precautions before the patient returns to her assisted living apartment. Almost immediately, the conversation is directed toward the daughter because it is so much easier to explain to her what should be done. All right, let's review. What might the staff do to help the patient understand the following? How to use the walker consistently. Wearing shoes that are leather, tennis shoe type, or uniform style. Considering Velcro, clo Velcro closures as opposed to laces that have to be tied. And not walking a dog on a leash. So how can we get the patient to understand this information? So this patient has a hearing impairment and they have moderate dementia. So she may be more prone to forgetting what you tell her. So it's important to allow her to understand that you don't want her to get hurt and that these key points are important. Keep the message concise, right? If there's shorter, more concise messages, the more likely she will be able to remember them. And it's important to remember to speak in a tone that she'll be able to hear. So asking the patient if they have any questions after giving them these key points. You can also ask them questions. So you could ask, do you have a good pair of walking shoes? And then explaining what a good pair of walking shoes might look like. Another point may be, I know you have a cute dog that you enjoy taking walks, taking on uh, walks with a leash, but for the time, you will not be able to do that. They can hurt you, so we cannot allow you to use a leash to take him for a walk. Um, and then asking, is there someone else that could take your dog on a walk? things like that. It's really important to have that conversation, to talk about all of the things that may prohibit the patient from following these instructions. Do you guys think the patient should be left out of the conversation just because they have um, moderate dementia and hearing impairments? Should the daughter even be included at all? So the patient should definitely be included in the conversation. It's so important to include any patient in the conversation, but the daughter does also need to be included because it's one other person that can um, kind of back you up on this information and be the one that um, is reiterating these points once the patient goes home. In cases such as these, is something other than verbal communication indicated? Let's think about that. With this patient, do you think she's only going to be able to remember what, she, what you tell her? Probably not. So it would be really important and really thoughtful of you to write down these instructions for the patient as well. Something that maybe she could post on her refrigerator as a reminder um, to put on her shoes, her good walking shoes every day, to use her walker, to not walk her dog on a leash. This is a good reminder versus just using that verbal communication. So I hope you guys liked these case studies and it gave you something to kind of think about and to wrap your head around, um, especially using this therapeutic communication.